Right, welcome back. Uh, at this point, I'm really not sure quite what I want to do. I've just tried to do a complete a project and it was a complete fail. So anyway, I've picked these two moulds to cheer myself up a bit. Uh, this beautiful heart-shaped box with a lovely lid and what looks like a sort of diamond, raised diamond patterning on the inside. Also got another gorgeous little pot, looks a little bit like an onion shape, I believe. And again, we've got some nice faceting uh, design on the inside of the pot and also on this lovely lid. But then it was a case of, well, what do I do? Do I use different coloured pigments? Do I use this beautiful silver deco pen to highlight some of these places that I'm just pointing out to you now? Um, or is that really going to be quite the headache? I mean, I, I was really trying to get over having had a really disappointing result to a project to the point where I threw it away. Um, but anyway, moving on, we're going to use some of these lovely chrome powders they're called now they're actually used for nail art and I used some of them recently in uh, the uh, heart shaped pendants there we go in these two and can you see where it's just got that tiny like sheen sort of makes it more metallic -y looking just to the edges and I thought I'm definitely need to use one of these from one of these packs in the design in one of the in one of these beautiful pots with the lids but then of course it was oh my gosh which one which one one pack is all for use really on whites and the others as i said it's, it's a sweet candy so i think if you put them on darker colored bases they look gorgeous and then i remembered all the lovely glitter selections that we've got so as you can see i'm really just fell down the rabbit hole here my expression for saying oh when is too much too much and I really just can't make my mind up as you can see but oh my god then I remembered the lovely donut sugar glitter from glitter bells don't know if you've managed to get yourselves any of that just yet but they're gorgeous and then of course always there's always silver foil so good good lord knows what I'm going to do at this point but sense prevailed and I decided I'm going to do glitter effect in one and beautiful chrome powder in the other. So I picked this lovely chrome powder and it's giving that lovely sheen, almost like an Aurora Borealis effect. So here's a little time lapse of me applying it. I'm just using regular paintbrush or you can use your um, eyeshadow applicator, foam powder pad thing or, you know, whatever you feel comfortable using. Oh, look at the way it's picking up the, the light, the, the natural light with the highlights. And it, it just, it looks beautiful, I think. And I'm really hoping that it stays and the resin. So in case you haven't realised, I am going to use resin in these as well. Usual stuff, the T-Expert one-to-one mixing ratio. So just hoping that it picks it all off, up, off of the mould. There we are, there's that lovely, you can see the pink sheen, pinky violet sheen. And it wasn't from Colourful White, I picked up the wrong pack. It was from Sweet Candy. So I can't wait to try some more of those. Now, wasn't sure what to go, because I thought I've got to add something into the resin. So I'm going to add some of the beautiful Donut Sugar Glitter by Glitter Bells. But before I do that, I need to decide what I'm going to do with this other one. And I thought, let's just go with clear glitter and uh, uh, clear glitter, sorry, clear resin and have some glitter in it, but different sizes of glitter. Now, I love this. And as this is a Valentine's theme video, we're still in there. I'm going with Valentine's theme colors. So I'm thinking I'm going to use some of this. Now, at this point, I thought, why have I got static on wooden stick? doesn't compute to me doesn't make sense so as you can see some of it went in the pot and some of it went outside of the pot <laughs> it can only happen to me and then I decided to add some of this other paler pink more of a chrome um, silvery pink to it which is slightly smaller in size to the other glitter they're more like confetti glitters these um, everything that we use by the way in this video will be listed in the description box some of it may come up on the left hand side of the video for you as well also going to use some of this lovely sparkly white which is a much much finer glitter um, and possibly some of this pink maybe maybe so we're just custom making some glitter here 
custom making a, a, I haven't called it anything in particular and I haven't necessarily recorded what I've put in but you know you don't have to stick to just one type of glitter you can always mix up a few you can use different shades of that color you can use completely different colors in it it's it's you know totally up to you choice is yours so just adding some more in that looks more like sugar but I promise you it's not and please don't eat glitter now, how, to, how tempted some of you might be, please don't eat glitter. Make sure you wash your hands thoroughly afterwards use as well, otherwise you'll end up putting glitter everywhere and anywhere. Um, so here we go. We're also, I am going to put some of this on my hands. This is this beautiful, fine white glitter. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. There we are. Just adding some in and maybe a bit more. And then just stirring it with this little... A uh, little thin um, stir stick, or you can use whatever you'd normally use to mix up your resins and, and glitters. So here's the resin that we've used. Um, it is the Tea Expert, as I said. It's a one-to-one -one mixing ratio. It's our go-to brand of resin at the moment. We will be trying another one soon once we've used up all the Tea Expert. So into the glitter um, creation, we're going to pour in some of this lovely resin. Now, you can see bubbles coming up to the surface. They're just naturally dissipating. If you've got a um, bubble extracting machine like we have, you can always use it. I didn't on this occasion. I'm not sure why, but I didn't. Uh, and it will get rid of the um, bubbles for you. But of course, then when you mix glitters or pigments into your, your uh, resin, you're actually just going to add in more bubbles. So here we are. Here's this lovely like onion-shaped mould. And we're just going into the base, the pot part of it, pouring it in slowly, just stopping for a bit, letting it naturally find its way into the mould and rise up to the to the surface, to the top of it. And just putting that to one side. And here is the lid. Now, the top of the lid, I'm just also sorry, before I do that, going to add in a little bit more clear there. It's just going to push some of that glitter off of the bottom and down to the sides. I was a little bit concerned that maybe I might not have enough. <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, and then going back to the lid, pouring a small amount in to start with, because we don't want any air bubbles. So I'm just going to push the little stir stick down, trying to get rid of the air bubbles, getting the resin to coat around all the side, all the your surfaces in the mold you can also do there you go you saw me doing the little squidging technique and then filling it up the remainder of the mold with this lovely resin and considering this is clear resin it actually looks almost pinky colored doesn't it but that's obviously all the different types of glitters that you've got in there so there we go just filling it up and i do actually go back to the pot part of the mold and just top that up as well now we come to the heart shaped mold it's got this lovely chromey chrome um powder in it and I'm using the donut sugar by glitter bells glitter in it and then I'm thinking is it it's not quite what it's not quite pink enough um, so I've added some more of that finer pink glitter that I just showed you and here we go now can't my mind up now do I pour it into that one first with now I'm going to go with the pot and we're just pouring it in just around the edge carefully there we go. Now this pot doesn't take as much resin as the onion shaped one. Filling it round up to the top, trying not to get any spillage or overpool because that's going to be more on cleanup. And now into the lid. Now this lid has got a lip on it. So very aware of that. So do make sure that you go around carefully with a micro brush or a mini stir stick just around the edge on the inside lip of the mold trying to dispel any uh, of the little bubbles that might appear in there. So there we are, that's that one done. Just going to spritz the tops of these moulds with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. Uh, that one, I also do it to the onion shaped pot and the lid for that one. Just to dispel any more of the bubbles that are coming up. I don't know if you can see all the one on the left at the bottom. All those little twinkles that look like they're coming to the surface. The little bubbles that are dissipating up and through. So here's the little shot. Here we go. Little close-up shot. Uh, they weren't cured at this point. Um, I did have some resin left over. So I made these three lovely little hearts. Which uh, you'll also see at the end of the video. So those you could make into handbag charms, pendants, key rings. Whatever you wish. 
or little pocket hugs as well. So here we go with this one first. So we've still got some glitter on the base of the pot, which is good. It's good. Had a few problems trying to get it away. So this was the following day. Um, I should have left it longer, but you know, I'm impatient. And I'm thinking, oh, I can demold this. Just go a bit careful. Uh, this has been sped up. I didn't do it this quickly, trust me. Um, there we go. And then just turning it together. It's come away from the mold quite nicely there. Lovely, full of glitter, glitter in the base, beautiful on the sides, just enough, just enough. And can you see where the glitter, the bigger glitter was heavier? It's gone more to the rim of the pot and the base, which is fine. I like that effect. It looks, I think it looks lovely. Um, as I say, you can, I decided not to use the deco, the silver deco pen in the end on either of these two pots, but you could, of course, highlight the uh, some of the elements of where it is the faceted parts in both of the pots but I decided not to do that so here we are just demolding the lid part hoping really hoping that the top of it has come away in one piece and there's no air bubbles trapped and this is looking quite good it's a little bit maybe a little bit of sanding just around the edge perhaps and the inside of the mold uh, there we go, but oh, they're all very reasonable. Now, does it fit? <gasps> yes, it does. That fits nicely. I mean, obviously, you couldn't hear the sound of it fitting, but it does fit nicely, and I think that I think that looks lovely, absolutely gorgeous. So we'll just leave that to one side now to cure for another day or so, and then it'll be fully hardened, ready for you to use or to gift or to sell. So here's the heart-shaped pot, and uh, as you can see, look at the two glit different glitters, the way they compare. I really love this. Um, as I say, this is from Glitter Bells, this glitter, the main part of this glitter, donut sugar, from Glitter Bells. Um, again, gifted to a friend of ours, Leona, who does um, Nails by Leona, if you're in the Bristol, UK area. Why not go over to her socials and, uh, you know, book in for an appointment with her. Tell her we sent you. <laughs> um, there we go. So it came away from the mold nice and easy. The glitter looks lovely in the base. Got a little bit of overspill there, which I'll tidy up. Uh, just using a little nail file or perhaps with some scissors because it's still quite soft. Look at the way that powder's picked up on the mould and the resin. Wow. And one thing I was worried is that it would come off in your hands and it doesn't, as I've just shown you. It's not coming off at all. Still a little bit soft at the moment. So, you know, like the other one, we'll leave it another day or so and it'll fully harden. So just going a bit careful with this lid. Carefully does it. There we go. So as I say, so the lid's still a little soft, and oh, okay, so that's, that's oh, excuse, excuse the sneezing in the background, that was one of my dogs. Um, so there we go, um, unfortunately, it looks like some air bubbles have got a bit trapped, and that's what happens, uh, so we've got some of those, oh, bless you, sorry about that, um, we live in the real world here. Um, we will go back and we'll just we'll fill in those air bubbles um, once it's fully cured um, but you know, the lid fits nicely it is supposed to fit like that slightly indented from the outer edge of the pot it looks gorgeous um, I'm so pleased with the effect of this you can see the glitter slightly and the chrome powder here's a few final shots of them so this is against our signature colors which is the um, lavendery pale mauvey colour and then on some beautiful pink velvet cushions <laughs> giving them pride of place there um, I think they look stunning absolutely stunning lovely Valentine's gift for anybody you know that, that or, or just even to a friend gifting Mother's Day there's another suggestion if you're in the UK that's coming up in March um, Obviously, Valentine's Day before that in February. And, uh, yeah, uh, birthdays as well. Really, all year round. Just give it to a friend just to say thanks, you know. Um, so, hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Uh, thanks for staying with us. I appreciate it's almost 15 minutes long. If you checked in and you looked at the previous video to this, that was Wayne. Bless him. First full voiceover. Uh, very nervous about doing it, but I think he did a really good job. And there's finally, here's the three lovely little hearts. Thanks for watching, everyone. Tune in, like, sharing, subscribing. See you again soon. Bye.